Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. You read the title of the video, didn't you? You know what's about to happen. Here's the deal, though. I gotta explain it to you. This is not some dude trying to make an internet video. This is me trying to answer a question that I've wanted to know my entire life. What happens when a baseball goes past the speed of sound. And there's very specific reasons why I want to know this. This is a Smarter Everyday Baseball, by the way. More about that later. When I was a kid, I did a book report on this book, Nolan Ryan, Strikeout King. And I learned that in 1974, Nolan Ryan, while playing for the Angels, threw their first recorded baseball past 100 miles per hour. After learning about that pitch, every time I stepped onto the field, I thought about the ballistics of throwing a baseball through the air. When I went forward into school, I started learning about aerodynamics, and I realized there was math associated with all the stuff, and I started to learn these equations, and I fell in love with the mechanics of how things fly through the air, to the point where, as a part of my job, as a developmental weapons tester, I developed a pretty intimate relationship with air cannons. This is me in a German air cannon. Anyway, here's the deal. If you were to draw a Venn diagram of everything I love, aerodynamics, baseball, uh, air cannons, right in the center of all that, supersonic baseball cannons. So today's video had to happen. For me, I have to know what happens when a baseball goes past the speed of sound. Like does the cover rip off because of the shock wave? What exactly happens when this thing goes Mach 1? Let's go learn and get smarter every day. In an earlier episode of Smarter Every Day, we made a golf ball air cannon. We put a golf ball in there, pressurized one side, and put tape over the end. We used a vacuum pump to pull a vacuum inside of a barrel. When we release that pressure, the golf ball will accelerate down the barrel, rupture the tape, and exit at an incredible velocity. What we want to do here is basically the same thing, only at a much larger scale. The baseball is 1.6 times larger than the golf ball and three times as heavy, and Mach 1 is 767 miles an hour. So in order to do this, we have to do some serious engineering. So I got some buddies to help me out, and we started brainstorming. You'll remember David from the Vortex Collision Device, Jeremy Fielding from the Mad Batter, and Trent from the Lawn Tool videos. If you got holes in there, it's got to go around corners and what have you. Okay, so, so imagine this. Imagine, so right now we've got a pipe, and then we're pulling the plug out, boom, and then all the air rushes in the end there, right? Yeah. What if we have the pipe all the way inside the tank? This really is just a cone to make sure got it in we there. engage the barrel every time, and it also retains the seal. And we may be able to get supersonic velocity with air just because of the vacuum here and because of the, the Venturi. As soon as I start modeling it, I'm going to have a bunch of questions. Cause at that point I'm like, I'm putting screws there. I'm putting like, wh how you how do you make it? It's so, gonna be long. It's gonna get a longer trailer, man. It's we a longer trailer, that's yeah. how it works. <laughs> we need to talk about that. So I've been successful in uniting you both against me. So it sounds like we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. we've decided how we're gonna do it. Exactly, now we know what we're doing. We'll tell, yeah. we'll tell Dustin what we came up with. <laughs> okay, I wanna show you how this thing works because it's awesome. This is the SolidWorks model, and we're gonna cut this thing in half, and we're gonna zoom in right here and show you what it looks like on the inside. The whole idea here is we want that baseball to go stupid fast. So to do that, we need a whole lot of air on one side and not a lot of air on the other. That difference in pressure will make it go. This seal right here is how we create that difference in pressure. We can pressurize the tank on the left here and then we pull a vacuum on the barrel on the right. When we're ready to fire, if we pull that rod back, it'll break the seal, dumping all that air behind the baseball and off she goes. Pressurizing this tank is a little bit harder than it might seem because you have several different places air could leak out. We have a gasket here, 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 and a dynamic seal on the rod back here. So when we pressurize that tank, it's going to try to push that rod out the back of the tank just like a syringe, which sounds like a bad thing, but it's actually good because we're going to use that force to try to pop the cork on the baseball even faster. To do this, we designed this sear mechanism at the back of the tank. We push the rod into place really hard, and then we compress that front gasket, making a seal behind the baseball. We then click up this little thing, and it holds everything together if we get all the alignment right. Since it's one long rod, that keeps the gasket in the front sealed until the moment we want to release it. We then pressurize everything in the tank 
tank and then we release that sear and it'll dump all the air into the baseball so it goes stupid fast. The problem is now the rod is free and it starts to move back very fast and it's so heavy it could break stuff. So to fix that we have this shock absorber in the back that we can tune with a valve to try to slow down and stop the rod. Let's go forward and look at some of the cool things we did to the vacuum side on the barrel. With the golf ball cannon when we looked at the slow-mo I observed that as the ball got closer to the end of the barrel it started to inflate the tape kind of like a balloon. That told me that there was still air inside the barrel meaning we were losing some of the velocity in the barrel due to drag. In an effort to get rid of any extra air in this 20 foot long barrel we have two extra vacuum volumes on the front. We've got this big cylinder up front here and then we have this big red box beam underneath the barrel. The idea is as the ball goes down that 20 foot long barrel if there's any extra air in there it has a place to go. I don't really know if this part's going to work. I honestly just kind of made it up but it makes sense. You want to suck the ball to the end of the barrel and you want to like get rid of the air that's in the way so you've got what I call extra vacuum ullage. Anyway doesn't matter. Build montage. Since the dawn of blacksmithing, the, the relationship between welders and, and engineers has been contentious. Wouldn't you say? moment of truth we're gonna pressurize this thing the the question here is we've got that rod running all the way through does the pressure seal off right here where that plug is and also do our seals back here work what do you think 300 psi yeah that sounds like a good test it is time the moment we've been waiting for oh my goodness look at that oh dude oh it's moving now oh dude what hath we wrought going up Oh my god. Oh, dude. This is insane, man. <laughs> this is insane. Oh, golly, guys. Okay, here we go. Mark one supersonic baseball cannon. Take one. Baseball's loaded. Goggle up, guys. Science is about to happen. Here we go. It appears to be holding. All right, so first shot, 300 PSI. It's definitely quiet. I don't hear anything up here. No leaking? Yeah. You guys ready? Three, two, one. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness. I think we need to paint this thing and we need to get out in a more scientific environment and probably get the high speed camera out and see what's going on. But this is nuts. Okay, we have the thing built. We have all of the baseballs ordered. That is a ton of baseballs. They're really cool, by the way. They have a Smarter Everyday logo on one side and the Rocket City Trash Pandas on the other. More about that later. There's a way you can actually get one of these baseballs. Anyway, now that we built it, we have to control it. This is what we want to do. We want to make a controller for the whole thing. We need gauges all in one location so we can 
monitor the chamber pressure. We also need to know the vacuum pressure in the barrel itself. We need to have all of this information in one location so that when it comes time to hit the big red button and send this baseball at supersonic velocities, we'll have it all right there in one spot. So we painted the cannon, we did some low pressure testing, which I'm sure the neighbors blamed on Redstone Arsenal nearby, and I dubbed it the Mark I supersonic baseball cannon. Today is the day. We're gonna shoot the first baseball in a relatively controlled environment. So the goal for today is just to see if we can get above the speed of sound in one shot with nitrogen. I doubt we can. This is Trent setting up Schlier in here. We got this mirror and we're just gonna see if we can see the shock wave go across and the shadow graph of the baseball. We're shooting with nitrogen. The reason we're shooting with nitrogen is the molecular weight's around 28. Jeremy's excited. Are you excited? Definitely excited. <laughs> we are excited. We're gonna be shooting with nitrogen because the speed of sound in nitrogen is higher than the speed of sound in air. Interestingly, I learned this, the speed of sound in humid air is higher than dry air. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is, because we're gonna be pressurizing that thing really high, we're gonna be setting this thing up as a place to get behind when we are getting up ready to shoot. I gotta, I gotta focus on what I'm doing. Can you spin this at a 45 the other way? Uh, orthogonal to the gun, coming down. If that thing blows up, we don't want Destin and Jeremy's soup back here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so let's get ready for the shot. We are using uh, a single light source for our Schlieren setup. So that's a fiber optic light. The fiber optic light goes and bounces off the mirror, comes back. We're cutting the light with, oh, we're cutting the light with that razor right there. It's hard to see because I was in the way. Trent, do you mind getting the matches? But what happens is, if you if you look here at our Schlieren setup, Trent's gonna light the matches right there. You should see a double, yeah, hold it up just a little bit. There you go, see the double match? That's because there's a shadow going across the match and then coming back through the match. So let's talk through what about, we're about to see. There's some stuff going on here. So back when Nolan Ryan used to pitch, they would measure the speed of the pitch at the plate. Um, now they measure the speed of the pitch at the hand. This is important because I don't think what we're about to do is gonna be supersonic. This is day one, we're ringing everything out. I'm gonna come out here and fiddle in the field for however many weeks it takes to get the exact shot I'm looking for, which is a shockwave over the baseball. So what I think is gonna happen is we've got the baseball as it exits here. I think it's gonna exit supersonic just because of the speed of sound and nitrogen. But this shock wave is gonna come out and the baseball at some point is going to outrun. It's gonna be transonic in this region. My hypothesis is that the baseball will be subsonic when it passes the mirror and we won't get the supersonic shot today. It might be supersonic, but we won't see it. So this thing, the math says we can be rated up to 1,000 PSI. We're gonna go to 750 PSI. We've got a big, thick, real big, thick shield over there. Let's go look at it real quick. So here you go, two one inch thick sheets of steel. That is a massive target. Let's get a baseball. Oh, it's time, it is time. Okay, we're about to go through the safety checklist, which is right here. Um, this is what the control panel looks like. We tried to make it as straightforward as possible. Uh, we're gonna add gas here. We're gonna do the first shot at 750 PSI, which is the highest pressure we've ever pressurized this thing to. Uh, if you know anything about pressure vessels, we're gonna be behind this steel, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so uh, here we go. Ready for loading procedures. Ramrod. There we go. Is your heart beating fast? <laughs> it is, you're excited too. It doesn't feel right to be this excited about a thing. Confirm all clear of the trailer. Clear. Switch tank to vent ready. Oh man, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, so the tank is capable of holding pressure now. So we're pulling the vacuum now. My heart's not beating quite as fast as yours. It's had a chance to calm down. <laughs> okay, all right. <sighs> So an absolute vacuum is negative 14.7 PSI. If we can get somewhere below 13, we're good. About to pressurize here by adding gas. All right, tank is pressurizing. Nobody get outside the steel right now. That is a lot of volume, so we're gonna be holding this for quite a while. This is tickling all of the brain parts <laughs> that need to yes. be tickled. Yes. We got baseball, we've got 
oh, golly, we've got ideal gas law, we've got aerodynamics, we have mechanics, we have mechanical design. I get to push a button and loud things happen. You get to push a button underneath the red cover sway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. 180 PSI. We're at minus 13.9 on the vacuum. There will be a significant sonic boom. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm a little tingly. My We're at not quite 300 PSI. Dude, we have a really good vacuum right now. 540 PSI. We're losing our vacuum. Hey, we're losing our vacuum. Do you want to shoot? Here we go. Get ready. Ready? Three, two, one. What on earth? <laughs> Where'd it go? That ball disintegrated. No, it didn't. I think it hit the. It did hit the back. It did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> get the. Get the. Hold on, hold on. Tank is safe. Tank is safe. <laughs> oh, shredded, man. Oh, oh wait, God. you can see the seams. <laughs> fantastic. Okay, so at some point we're gonna get that high speed. Oh man. Okay, cool. Let's go do science. I don't think that one's gonna be supersonic. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. I gotta admit, when I first saw this, it was genuinely hard to believe my eyes. Okay, yeah, so. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> oh, man. <You> got... <laughs> Dude, what have we, what have we done? Look at it. It's beautiful. Can we just walk over and put a uh, ruler in front of That's the mirror now? That's supersonic. And then we'll know how much that transient space is? You can tell it's supersonic by the angle. Like it has a mock cone. Is it closing behind it? It's got something funky going on. Wow. I have no idea what we've done. We, we need to measure, we need to figure out that velocity. So do you have something we can calibrate? Yeah, absolutely. 0.014. Okay, now this is rough. Okay, that's it. Now, 1,050 miles an hour. 1,050 miles an hour. Where's my phone? Mach 1.38. <laughs> I'm legitimately having problems functioning correctly. It just, it seems too fast. Like this is just imagery and math. That's all this is. We're gonna make sure that we actually did go supersonic because the shockwave was detached from the nose of the baseballs on Schlieren. So we've got a stop here and a stop here. They're 12 foot apart. We've got the camera right there. So as the baseball goes across, not only can we get velocity this time, We've got a really good pixel calibration and we'll be able to get the drag coefficient of the baseball. 530 PSI, about minus four on the vacuum. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Holy. <laughs> okay, the indisputable two stick method. Velocity is equal to distance divided by time. The time to the first stick is 29 milliseconds. And remember, this is happening fast. We're recording at 28,500 frames per second. The time to the second stick is 36.8 milliseconds. Subtract those two and divide. That gives us 1,538 feet per second, which is basically 1,050 miles per hour. Adjust for altitude and temperature and... Yeah, hey, it's supersonic. Yeah. That, that was Mach 1.35. What? I mean, that's just measured straight up with poles. Okay. We have a supersonic baseball cannon. It is verified. Ready? Three, two, one, fire. We've all heard the expression, knocking the cover off the ball. But the ability of a baseball to be destroyed by literally ripping itself apart with kinetic energy is something I never thought I would see. That's how leather breaks when it's beyond its tensile strength. 
After several shots, we realized the cannon was extremely consistent with its targeting, so I decided to put the high-speed camera in a little bit of danger in hopes of seeing something amazing. We ordered a set of official Major League Baseball so we could begin to understand what would happen if an MLB fastball traveling at over a thousand miles an hour were to hit something. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, fire. <laughs> Trigger? Yep. It didn't go over, but it definitely blew the camera. Okay. Even though I thought I knew what this would look like up close, I was totally blown away by what I saw. Okay, so I've thought for a year about how I'm gonna say this, and I still don't know if I have it right. So I'm just gonna tell you everything, and just, I trust that you're gonna understand. Here's the deal. A project like this is gigantic, and it's very difficult to get a sponsor to sign up for something like this. There's just too much risk, right? However, back in the day, I had a crazy idea, and I was able to convince my wife. <laughs> and so, the crazy idea is, what if I get a baseball, with the Smarter Every Day logo on it, and I mail it to everyone who supports on Patreon, literally everyone who supports Smarter Every Day on Patreon, and maybe over time, we can get enough support on Patreon to offset something this large, and hopefully we don't have to worry about schedules, and you're smart, you know how the internet works. But there was a problem. I didn't have that many baseballs, and I didn't have a way of getting that many baseballs. Which is why I reached out to the new minor league baseball team in town, the Rocket City Trash Pandas, which I think we will agree is the best minor league baseball team name in the history of minor league baseball teams. And I said, hey, Trash Pandas, here's the deal. I would like to do this crazy supersonic baseball cannon. Would you consider helping me get baseballs? And they said, yes, just tell people about the Trash Pandas. You know, our first season's coming up. We're really excited about it. Well, they didn't get to play their first season. So the Trash Pandas really need people to know about the Trash Pandas right now. They have great shirts and stuff like that. I'm sure they would love the support. They helped me make these baseballs. And over several months, like four months, I signed all these baseballs. You understand what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to break free of a calendar slash schedule-based model for why and how I can make videos. This is what I want to do. I want to make the most amazing video at any given time that my mind can come up with free from obligation. And Patreon would help me do that. If you would please consider signing up for Patreon at patreon.com slash smarter every day, that will enable me to be free, to do whatever my mind wants to do. My goal with Smarter Every Day is to change the world for good, whether it be making a student curious, uh, you know, making somebody want to excel beyond what they think they can do, or just straight up helping people in ways that they don't see coming. So that's what I like to do with Smarter Every Day. I can promise you that any support you give to Smarter Every Day will go to good in the world. All that being said, please consider subscribing to Smarter Every Day on Patreon. I would greatly appreciate that, and I will send you this baseball. If you are a patron already, I need to know your address because I need to send you your baseball because I have it. I signed it. I just don't have your address in the system. So if you already support Smarter Every Day on Patreon, please do that. Patreon.com slash Smarter Every Day. Big thanks to the Trash Pandas for helping me do this. They're really great people. I want to see them succeed. They're an affiliate of the Angels. Also, yeah, that's it. By the way, we now have a supersonic baseball cannon on Smarter Every Day. We can do whatever we want now. I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for supporting this goofy little channel that this guy in Alabama has where he explores math and science and tries to do things that are intelligent, respectful, humble, and fun. That's kind of my goal. Thank you for considering your support on Patreon. Also, thank you for considering subscribing. I'm Destin. I'm grateful to you. You get smarter every day. Have a good one. Bye.